Get your advanced copy of my new book, The Body and the Cosmos at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of October 13, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And as we start this week, we do so under the light of a full moon. It is happening right out of the gate, right around Sunday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. Well, that is when we are going to have this month's full moon. And part of what makes this full moon distinctive is how it is communicating with other power players in the sky. It does have a beautiful alignment with Jupiter. Now, Jupiter has a tendency to magnify. And so Aries full moon, this is an energy of adrenaline, the adrenaline junkie, the sugar rush. It's an energy of feeling and doing, having very little space between them. Very little space for thought, that's for sure. It can be very instinctual, but also very entrepreneurial as well. And so as we move through the world, we may be inspired to react, to feel and to immediately show it, to have that sense of stimuli and response be almost instant. And sometimes that can work, right? When it is that we're trusting our instincts and they are particularly strong, well, we're more inclined to trust them. We're more inclined to go with what it is we feel. And if we feel like in one moment running and jumping and screaming, and at the next moment being more reflective and more meditative, that may seem dramatically different to observers, but when it is that we're acting from that place of instinct and even intuition, it may not seem so strange to us. Well, Jupiter is only gonna magnify these tendencies. Jupiter, of course, is uh, continuing to move through the sign of Sagittarius, its home sign. And Jupiterian energies are that much more magnified at this time, have been over the course of the last year. We've got less than two months to go of this energy. So this is the time to make the most of it by looking at where it is that this Jupiter cycle is taking place for you, how it's speaking to you in your chart and striving to tap into that energy, that energy of blessing and possibility. It is going to be at this full moon that chances are we're going to feel a sense of determination to live in the present, to make the most of this time, to be more courageous, to take more risks. And especially where it comes from a place within us that is rooted in the values that we've decided for ourselves, values that are rooted in our truth, however subjective a truth it may be. Well, those are the actions that are more likely to bring us a sense of peace and a sense of knowing that when we honor ourselves where it is that we work through our own fear and our own messaging and we get to the other side, then when we honor ourselves, do we honor the divine? But I think what happens is that space between self and divine, it can get rather murky in our world. However, the thing is the type of conversation playing out here, what astrologers call a trine, it tends to have a, a, a side effect, which is that it can be a little lazy. And especially when you add these uh, planets that are more oriented towards feeling and pleasure and indulgence, it makes it that much more likely that we are going to indulge and take it easy, take it uh, a bit of a step back and to allow ourselves to have faith and to trust, which is great. However, it is faith that is stronger when it is supported by our actions. Well, thankfully with this full moon, uh, I don't think that'll be an issue because we do have some challenging aspects taking place between this full moon and Saturn and Pluto both. These planets are said to be square. That is the type of conversation playing out here. And this is a conversation of motivation, which is a great way to harness this energy. Where is it that we really want to do something? We want to be something. And where is it that we are feeling that our practical reality is not matching up with 
that instinct, that feeling, that desire. Well, it is going to be this full moon and this very energy that's going to show us and, and bring with it a certain determination, a certain passion, a certain sense of focus so that we can actually start aligning our lived reality with what it is that we feel so inspired by. With the Pluto energy in the mix, well, that can be focus. It can add a depth and intensity to the determination that we feel, but there is a caution here in that when it is that Plutonian energy is not accessed consciously in healthy ways, and healthy ways means to be a force of transformation in your life and the lives of others, to understand what really matters, the essentials, and to focus in on that, to understand what is superficial and clear that away so that we get to the essence, so that we get to the truth, and we get to be our truth that much more with this full moon, and Aries being about that sense of truth of self. However, when it is that this energy is accessed in a way that maybe isn't as enlightened or isn't as evolved, we are going to have to be mindful because this can represent um, a sense of unfairness, a sense of not feeling as if things are as balanced as we would like. And so as part of that, it makes it that much more important for us, those of us who care about putting love and wisdom into the world, to be more adamantly loving that even when people make it hard to be willing to see where it is that they too are on a journey towards greater love and greater wisdom. And I know that some people make that really hard. <laughs> and with this Aries full moon, well, it has such a tendency to react, to see that or to experience a glimpse of that and to immediately want to react, to push back against it. And of course, whatever's right for you to do, in light of a moment, in light of your unique circumstances. And I'm not saying that anything like this necessarily will happen. Sometimes it's within us. It's with the information we surround ourselves in, the, the type of conversations that we're pursuing and having. But for all that, with this energy, it can inspire us to take the kind of action that does align us with those higher principles, to be willing to see the fear that underlies the actions that may be creating pain in a life and sometimes in more than one life. It is from that space where we're at least willing to glimpse some of the fear that we can then become a force of transcendence, a force of evolution, of moving beyond those immediate reactions, no matter how intense, no matter how strong we may feel that energy. With this as well, sometimes the way that I see this energy playing out is we might, some of us, get our buttons pressed. And so how do you deal with that? Well, first and foremost, it's important to practice self-care, to understand and be honest with yourself about the places and spaces that you might go, whether it's online or in person, that encourage you to indulge in energy that maybe isn't as healthy where you know that you're going to come across information that is there just to get a rise out of you. And when it is that you're able to see that in advance, to see it for what it is in terms of spaces and places where all it is about is getting that reaction, because any kind of reaction is better than none. The idea that someone could type something thinking that, oh, this is going to get someone riled up when it is that a person lacks love in their life, lacks the peace, that love and self-approval really, that peace that comes within from being willing to see the perfection in you and to be willing to move through whatever it is that you have felt in the past and instead align with love, align with wisdom, that takes a lot of will, that can take a lot of consciousness and for a lot of people out there, for some of us out there, uh, we don't align with those principles by default. It tends to be something that we're brought to because the way in which we have been living, the way in which we've been going on 
it isn't working for us anymore. It's creating a situation where there is such a lack of peace that instead of just creating that rise out of others, creating that pain out of others, we're feeling it within ourselves and towards ourselves. And it is from there being able to acknowledge that that is the first step towards transcending it. And so where is it that maybe in your life you have enjoyed poking just a little bit to see what would happen. Even though you knew that maybe this uh, would be something that could make a person feel less peaceful. Where is it that in your own life, by participating in certain behaviors, you have found yourself going for the, the addictive quality of the adrenaline rush, because it really is. That sense of a high that we get when we're just moving on energy moving on the thrill instead of knowing that really the greatest thrill is to be at peace with ourselves to sit with ourselves because it is in that space that true peace can be found instead of moving towards the thrill and chasing that and instead of participating in dangerous behaviors to know that our lives are valuable, that is a source of great peace. That is a source of great joy. And that is a thrill of its own. To be so connected to that sense of your own worthiness that you wouldn't put yourself in those situations. And we see it. All of us know it, right? We know people who have that sense of craving for uh, experiences that do uh, make them aware <laughs> of the finiteness of life. There are people who crave those experiences. And also, sometimes it can be that we're in a situation and emotions are running high. Sometimes it's our own emotions running high. But it's about what we do with it that matters. We can feel all kinds of things. Whatever it is that you may feel, it is a feeling and all feelings pass but it is ultimately what you show yourself while you move through them that builds character, that builds self-knowledge and builds self-respect. I don't think it's so likely that we're gonna just dive right into the sense of you know stimuli and response, whatever part of that uh, scale that we are on. And that is because this full moon is also square Saturn, square Pluto. Saturn represents restriction. And again, it is a square. There's tension here. And with that sense of restriction may also come the awareness of our true responsibilities. What a mature approach may be, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's uncertain. To be willing to even just acknowledge that there is a pathway here that can help us to feel less chaotic, that can help us to feel, and even if we would rather not, but can help us to feel more adult. It is the sign of Aries that has a strong association with the child and with child energy. But it is ultimately this Saturnian energy. Uh, Saturn energy is about not just the adult, but the grown up, <laughs> the person who has done what they needed to do to manifest the things that they desired in life, who have put in the time to actually manifest their goals, that doesn't necessarily happen in the immediacy and certainly not when we're very young. Even though from the outside it may look like, wow, that person's really motivated, that child is achieving so much, look how much that child has done and look how young they are. The truth is that that is its own mode of being, its own way of moving through the world. But when we look at things like true knowledge and true self-knowledge, well, that is something completely different. That can only come through active cultivation. And that is one of the things that grows stronger, not only with active, uh, active contemplation and active integration, but it grows stronger really as long as we continue to do the work, the older we get, right? That's one of the many, many advantages to getting older. 
is that you learn more about yourself and you get to change how it is that you may respond to a particular stimuli, to a particular moment because of the work you have done to understand your own responses, your own insights, your own perceptions, your own worldview more deeply than you have before. It is a powerful thing to recognize where it is that others might not be operating out of what we would call uh, meanness or unfairness, but to be willing to look beyond that because that can be a thick and scary mask to see somebody wear. But to be willing to look beyond that, there you will see the fear that may be motivating the actions. And the thing is, it's a lot harder to you know, resent somebody or be mad at somebody who's just afraid. That's it, it's just fear. When you're able to see it for what it is, that's when they become human, like you. We, as autonomous beings in our own body, understand what we feel in a way that nobody else can. It's just not possible. You are living as a complete entity in and of yourself experiencing yourself again and again and again through every moment of this incarnation. But that doesn't mean we can't know others more deeply, of course. And so we take what it is that we may see superficially about others and fail to recognize that all of us are complex and that there is no life without struggle. And all of us have our own struggles as well. And so, we've got this Pluto energy. If we're lucky, we tap into it for healthy obsessions. If it is that we're not necessarily engaging this energy actively, well, that is when it can feel pretty emotional, <laughs> let's say that. Aries energy in and of itself, being so connected to instinct and passion can already be very emotional. You add the energy of Pluto and a Pluto square, no less, the emotions magnify under this energy that much more. And so be kind and gentle to each other and to yourself. That can go a really, really long way. But if I had to choose, and especially with an Aries moon, an Aries full moon, no less, I would say start with you. Start with kindness towards yourself and see where it is that that takes you. Now the other really exciting news this week has to do with Mercury. It was late last week that Mercury went into shadow, which means the start of the Venus retrograde season. Now, Venus doesn't go retrograde until Halloween and we'll spend a full three weeks in the sign, in the energy of Scorpio retrograde. And the entire retrograde season, like once it is that Mercury goes retro and then forward again. The entire cycle will take us right into December, right around December 8 is when the Mercury retrograde season will be over. So at least for now, right, as we look ahead, we've got about two months of this energy and it's all happening in the sign of Scorpio. Now Scorpio is an energy that has to do with truth, has to do with digging in deep, understanding beyond the illusion the mask that we wear for ourselves to actually transcend that and to see the core, see the thing that maybe other people don't want to look at, maybe they reject, but being willing to see it, to acknowledge its existence is deeply sacred. To honor the experiences of others, to honor the world experience, that can be deeply meaningful at the very least to our own lives and our own journeys. It is Mercury now, newly in shadow, that is going to connect in harmony with that Saturn and that Pluto, but also supreme harmony with Neptune. Now it is that Neptunian energy that I'm especially encouraged by because it is about hope. It is about being swept up in a dream, in a fantasy. It is about having a sense of miracles, and how it is that they're playing out in our lives. The scorpion part of us might be resistant to it, and yet there is a part of us that can't help the allure, can't help but pull in a particular direction. And with Pluto squares, what does transpire can feel very faded as well. 
can feel like this is a moment, this is a time that whatever it is that is transpiring, there is something good here. There is something about this moment that is designed to help us to become more loving and more wise. So what is happening in the energy of Scorpio? Well, we've got Mercury reaching out to these three power players, but it will actually be in the last two weeks of November that we are going to return to this energy. And I do believe that it is these uh, particular aspects, this Mercury connecting with uh, Saturn and Pluto and supreme harmony with Neptune, it is these energies ultimately that are going to come back around in the last two weeks of November. Actually, it's going to be the case that Mercury will get there and basically be hanging out, basically appear to be standing still and holding these conversations, holding its connections throughout that two week period, a, a rare phenomenon here to hold those connections with these three big planets of Neptune, of Saturn and of Pluto. And so this is a great opportunity for us to get in touch with a deeper truth, a deeper sense of self, a sense of beingness in the world and find hope in that, find connection, find communion. It may take active steps on our part. That is the sextile playing out. It is the connection between Saturn and Pluto on one hand, Mercury on the other. But it is ultimately this combination that is going to allow us to bridge mind and heart, to understand the wisdom that is within, within our own bodies, our psyche, our spirit, and at the same time, to understand that we are constantly moving forward, moving upward, and moving towards greater love, greater wisdom, yes, but greater compassion and greater communion with Neptune in its home sign of Pisces. Now, whatever it is that does transpire this week, make sure you're jotting it down, you're writing it down, you're documenting it in some way, because it is going to be the last two weeks of November that we will return to what it was that transpired at this time. Whether it is just a little bit of a start that seemed to fizzle out and then a big opportunity comes in alignment with what it was that just felt like an idea at this time. Whether it is a new project that you're working on, know that it is going to be, once we get to the last two weeks of November, that serves as a truly decisive moment, a clarity of understanding, but we're going to be having a few of these. And just when you thought that was it, an opportunity passed you by, it may very well come back around. Normally a Mercury retrograde season can be quite intense <laughs> and uh, it can feel like things are going wonky around us. I think that's going to be less of an issue this time. In fact, I think that this Mercury retrograde season has the potential to truly deliver big blessings, what otherwise would just be an idea because of these characterizing alignments as part of this larger Mercury retrograde season. We'll find a way to take whatever progress we make, whatever insights we gain, and to turn them into something more stable, more long-term. We'll find a way to be more honest with ourselves, deeply so, so that then we can turn that energy and become a force of authenticity in the world. And of course, with Neptune, it is about the dream. It is about the hope. It is about the wish and also being swept away. The energy is quite intense here. And through it all and whatever may happen at this time, I do feel very encouraged by the fact that these are the types of conversation that are going to define this Mercury retrograde season. What I love about this week for us, well, there is a lot here, but I am actually going to say Mercury because I think that that is energy of good news uh, on a collective level. You know, I've been saying Mercury retrograde in Scorpio is very much about the investigative uh, analysis, uh, the reporting, because Mercury is the, uh, the ruler, the patron of reporters, of the media. Well, they are going to be especially insightful, a desire to really dig and understand, intellectually probing. But it is in this journey and in this process that 
there's also a divine uncovering taking place. Now I bring it to you. What is it within you that may have bought a little bit too much into the superficial? Where is it within you that you are starting to have a, a clarity of understanding as to what it is and where it is? You can bring about greater stability and long-term success that you can keep working towards a goal, but at the same time celebrate what it is that you have achieved. It can be a delicate balance, but with energy like this, we may very well find it. But most importantly, just when we thought an opportunity was really big and it's passed us by, well, something better, perhaps much, much better can find us now. Well, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what do you love about this week? I absolutely love reading you guys. And of course, you can log on to NadiaShaw.com sign up to be one of my superstars and get an expanded exclusive look at the week ahead for your sign by logging on into my website and becoming one of my very cherished fabulous superstars i appreciate all my superstars so very much here is my new book the body and the cosmos it's so very exciting to share this with you to put it in the world uh, it's humbling it brings me so much gratitude and real excitement as well. Uh, the boxes of books have found uh, my home in Canada, my parents' home actually in Canada, and I will be there in a few days. So the next time you see videos uh, or you see me teaching with Synchronicity University, I will be back in Canada, which means no biggie interruptions during our classes. But with the book, uh, one of the great things is that I was able to get a lot of extra copies. And so there is really only enough extra copies to offer the advance sale for another day. And so if you are interested in the advance uh, copy with lots and lots of gifts that come with it, uh, please do uh, keep your eye out, keep your attention out. Uh, because it is going to be the 15th of October, so it is going to be this week that a newsletter is going to go out uh, and social media posts are going to go up as soon as it is that that's available. I think I was sent about 15 extra copies, so they are expected to sell out. So if it is that you want that last chance opportunity to get the advanced copy of The Body and the Cosmos, uh, please do stay in touch. Uh, and, and pay attention to what it is that is happening because I will announce that as soon as it is available. And when I get home at the end of this week, that is when the divine preparation starts to take place. I'll be signing hundreds of these books uh, and I promised note cards with them as well. So I have to write up those note cards. So that's gonna keep me busy for a little while, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun as well. And of course, if you want, this as an ebook you can actually pre-order the ebook now and the pre-orders happen directly through amazon and if it is that you forward us the receipt then the meditations that are in this book i have made audio copies of those meditations and those are going to be uh, on sale later this month and so if it is that you decide you want to pre-order the ebook it's at a great price right now on amazon so you can put that in there, send us the receipt, and then on launch date, which is December 9, on launch date, that is when you'll be sent the audio meditation download. So you'll get 12 meditations, one for each sign uh, that is actually written about in this book, but I am speaking it. I'm giving you the audio copy of it with some very nice music in the background so that you can integrate some of the learning and the lessons that are in this book. And of course, this book is so deeply important to me. It is a, a philosophical and astrological exploration of the different parts of the body and so much more. It's a guide to meditation and how to use meditation to connect with different parts of uh, your spiritual self through the physical self. So I hope you absolutely enjoy it. You can read a preview on my website and it is gonna be December 9th that hard copies are going to be available on Amazon and other booksellers as well. And you can stay in the loop, stay connected, because I will tell you about what's happening with the book every single step of the way. Speaking of Synchronicity University, thank you so much to everybody who joined me for our very first class of the autumn session. It was all about Jupiter. It was a lot of fun. 
as I said, Biggie was, you know, kind of there. <laughs> Biggie was interrupting a little bit, but I edited those parts out for the most part. Um, and you can download that class. You can go onto my website and download that class. And again, I hope you absolutely do love it. You make the most of it. If you already signed up, whether you joined us live or not, you'll get the replay. If you've signed up for the autumn session, uh, you should have access to the dedicated Facebook group just for this session. And it is there that the classes are posted as well. So that'll give you an early look so you can start the replay right away until it is that you are sent the class. I try to do that within 24 hours, but sometimes depending on what's going on, it can take up to 48 hours. Uh, I think that my assistant did send out the Jupiter class already. And so if you haven't signed up yet, you can go, you can get the download and you can enjoy it. And of course, if you did sign up, then you should be getting that uh, copy, the video copy of the class to learn from infinitely. There's lots of more classes coming up. It is gonna be next week and the week after, the two weeks leading up to Halloween, that we are going to be talking about and discussing astrological magic, part two and part three. And this is gonna build on the astrological magic class that I did in the last session over summer school. So you can have a look at that if you are so inclined to cultivate a spiritual connection to the sky. And we are also going to have a class on Pluto through the signs and houses and an introduction to electional astrology, which is the astrology of the perfect day. So I hope that you will join me online for that live in real time or the replay or the download. Uh, it would be very nice to have you in class. And thank you to my students for making it such an incredible experience. I do absolutely love teaching. And so to have you there, uh, to have that exchange of energy, it's always so, so very rewarding. So thank you. Live events are coming up as well. I will be in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, coming up on January 11th, Saturday, January 11th. And I'll be doing uh, two parts. So the first is a lecture in the morning that's all about the 2020s from earth to air. And then in the afternoon, we are going to have a workshop on past lives in the astrology chart. I will have a few copies of my book on hand to sell, to sign. Uh, and of course, I'll be available for selfies and for hugs. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I always try to make the learning experience enjoyable every single step of the way. So I look forward to meeting you there. And it is going to be the next day on January 12th, Sunday, January 12th, that I will be on board. I am one of the participants as part of an amazing cruise experience that uh, is going to be uh, one of those experiences that I do believe is about facilitating a transformative experience for all the participants. As I said, I am one of the participants as part of many world-class astrologers who are going to be there. Uh, we are going to have seminars. We're going to be getting together, having morning uh, gatherings as well, meeting for dinner as well as part of a spiritual experience. There are going to be excursions that we will be going on also. And so I think that overall, uh, it is going to be one of those things that I, I believe is going to have its perfection. And so it's called Love, Joy, Hope, and Transformation. You would be very welcome to join us on board. And if you want more information about this transformative and really fun and exciting experience to share with other like-minded people. So if you'd like to know more, if you'd like to hang out with like-minded people and be part of a, a spiritual journey that we're gonna take together, well, click on the link below in the description box and I look forward to meeting you on board. And thank you, thank you so much to everybody who's already purchased advanced copies. I want to add very quickly that I am planning to come into Fort Lauderdale a couple of days early. Quite a few people have reached out and asked for consultations in Florida. And so I'll be based in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And if you would like a consultation and you are in that area, uh, right around those dates that I'm gonna be there, right around uh, the 9th and 10th of January, then please do use the contact form on my website. Let me know and we can have that come together and we can make that happen. And I would love that. I would love to meet you, look at your chart, answer your questions uh, and have some time together uh, to explore your astrology chart with you. 
and of course my book and of course my gratitude thank you thank you so much for watching thank you for being here thank you for your love and enthusiasm for what it is that i have to share i am eternally grateful for it thank you again it'll be a great week enjoy